um, invocation. Pray for me, Chaplain Snodgrass. <laughs> Let's stand for the invocation to remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of 2021, we want to thank you for all the blessings of this past year. Lord, we thank you for the, our families and our friends. Lord, we thank you for the, all of the things that we have seen and experienced. We thank you for delivering us healthy today. And Lord, we pray that as we face a new year, that Lord, you would go before us and prepare a way of peace and health for us. We ask that at the end of 2022, like 2021, we will testify of your goodness and your presence with us. We ask that your blessings rest upon our commissioners, Lord, upon our county, and all who enter here to do business. Lord, it is for your glory and your honor that we serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, do we have any speakers? Yes, ma'am, we have. Four speakers this morning representing the Miss Mobile Bay organization. And I would first like to invite up Larry Andrews, the director, and then we have three of the title holders. A special apology to you for holding you up. I'm so sorry, but welcome. Well, thank, thank you, you for coming. having us this morning. And I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everybody. As you said, my name is Larry Andrews. I'm the director of the Miss Mobile Scholarship Organization, which we are affiliated with Miss Alabama and the Miss America organization. And we're happy to say in 2022 that Miss Alabama and Miss America are celebrating the 100th um, anniversary. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we crowned our 100th uh, Miss America, which was Miss Alaska, and she took home over $100,000 in scholarships. And very even more proud than that, Miss Alabama, who was Lauren um, from Gulf Shores, um, took home, she was first runner up and took home over $42,000. So I know it's quite different today to to have a young woman with a crown and a banner sitting in front of you and you think more of a beauty queen. Uh, Miss America is a service organization. It started out as a, a PR um, to bring some more business to the New Jersey Shore and it has turned into the number one women's scholarship awarder um, company in the world. So we're very proud of the accomplishments that the Miss America organization has had. So um, a couple of years ago we started back Miss Mobile Bay um, and I'm here today to introduce our, our winners that we have for this year, but I'm also asking for your support to support the young women and our future leaders um, of Mobile, the state of Alabama, and America. So we're very excited with that. Um, we are working on um, gaining and, and getting more scholarship money, and we, we like to thank Ms. Connie Hudson for the support that she gave us um, this year. Um, so if, if you're looking for some wonderful young leaders and young women to help you in the community, um, in the city of Mobile, in the Mobile Bay area, I have three for you that are very excited to work, and they all have a platform. It's called their Social Initiative, um, Social Impact Initiative. It's something that they feel strongly about, that they educate the public with. Um, they go out to schools, businesses, and I'm going to let each one of these young women tell you a little bit about themselves, what they're working on as they prepare for Miss Alabama that's coming. Miss Alabama is in July of 2022, and the Outstanding Teen Program is um, in March of 2022. So we'd love for you to follow these young women on our Facebook, um, follow our organization. And if you'd like to hear more about it, I would love to share that with you. So now, I, with further ado, I, I, we have three wonderful young role models for you. Thank you, Larry. Our first is Brianna Burrell, Miss Mobile Bay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As she said, my name is Brianna Burrell, and I have the honor of serving and representing our great city as Ms. Mobile Bay 2022. Now, before we get started, I would love to interact with you guys, so I'm going to ask a series of questions, and if you answer yes to any of them, just raise your hand. So raise your hand if you've ever spent a hot mobile summer playing with a super circle water gun. Raise your hand if you've ever placed a call on speakerphone. 
And raise your hand if you've ever stopped at the red light. All hands need to be raised. <laughs> well, if you raise your hand to any of these questions, congratulations. You have benefited from inventions geniusly crafted by the minds and hands of people of color. This is monumental, especially because at their creations, education and career opportunities were not accessible to them. Years have passed and much progress has been made, yet we still face similar inequalities with education. As we progress to new frontiers of innovation, education in science, technology, engineering, and math grow in interest, but not opportunity. My social impact is Save a STEM, encouraging students of color in STEM engagement. And I focus on three points of funding, representation, and encouragement. We must advocate for adequate funding and resources for their classrooms. We must increase representation of minorities in STEM career fields, and we must create positive, engaging learning environments for these students. And my plan of action is a three-step phase, which is achievable with the support of each and every one of you. Step one begins with hashtag Poor the STEM, a Mobile County public school system tour of local businesses, companies, and organizations that work in STEM careers to expose our students to the world of opportunities right here in the Gulf Coast. Step two focuses on raising funds for scholarships for students of color in pursuit of STEM degrees and raising funds and supplies for STEM teachers so that their attention is on their students, not their bank account. And step three is the development of volunteer teams that go out into schools to help our students firsthand to show that their education is of valuable quality and it is valued by us. We as a community must invest in the future generation of engineers, doctors, tech CEOs, inventors, and creators. The world flourishes when educational exploration is awarded to all. So I ask you today to join the chain and help my social impact by connecting with me and we can work together by connecting with me on my social platform. Thank you for your time. Together, we can build the tomorrow of Mobile today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brianna. Our next speaker is Sydney Cantley, Miss Mobile Bay's Outstanding Team. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for having us. We really appreciate it. My name is Sydney Cantley. I'm a junior at Fair Oak High School. And I recently just won this title of Miss Mobile Bay's Outstanding Teen, and I'll be competing at Miss Alabama's Outstanding Teen in March, which is all a part of the Miss America organization, as Mr. Larry said. It's about empowering young women, and it's the number one largest provider of scholarships to um, young women today. So my platform is Adolescent Wellness Checkups, where it just promotes the importance of parents taking their children to their yearly wellness checkup. And this also applies to adults as well but I mainly specify on children because when I was a freshman in high school, I went to my yearly wellness checkup and my doctor noticed that one side of my neck was larger than the other. And after many tests and biopsies, we found out I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and Hashimoto's disease. So thyroid cancer is extremely rare in children. It's usually only found in adults. And Hashimoto's disease is an autoimmune disorder that basically, its main goal is to destroy the thyroid. So I had a double whammy, basically. But um, I had two surgeries. One was in November of 2019, where I had the left side removed. And actually, back in this year of April, I had my second surgery. Now, if it wasn't for that wellness checkup, we'd be talking a completely different story. And I'm blessed to say today that I am cancer-free. So the importance of going to your yearly wellness checkup, it diagnoses diseases in early stages. You can get preventative care, learn healthy behaviors, keep immunizations up to date, improve your quality of life overall. And not only is this go for your physical health, mental health is just as important. So ever since that first wellness checkup I went to in my freshman year of high school, I've been talking to my friends, my friends' parents, teachers, just telling them how important it is. And even like one of my closest friends, for example, she, every time she goes to her wellness checkup, she asks the doctor for her to check her thyroid because now she's more aware of the situation. And even though that there's people that don't go to their yearly wellness checkup, 99% of insurance companies offer free wellness checkups because it is a form of preventative care and it is so important. And actually, me and my journey has inspired me 
to go into the medical field and become an endocrinologist one day and attend the University of Alabama in Birmingham. And thanks to the Miss America organization and their scholarship program, I really do believe that I'll be able to get there one day. And hopefully sharing my story with others can help prevent waiting too long for a diagnosis. And I hope that you can share my story with others and help prevent a late diagnosis. Again, thank you so much for having us today. And our last speaker today is Finley Richardson, Miss Coastal Alabama Outstanding Team. Good morning. Like you said, I'm Finley. Uh, it's really nice to meet all of you. A little bit about me. I'm a junior at Saraland High School, so I live in District 1. I live in Saraland, um, but I'm happy to represent the whole coast down here. And something that's really heavy on my heart is reading and how it impacts children and really everybody. I see my dad never without a book, like at the football games, he comes to support me as the school's mascot and he's reading. So I've always had a very prominent example of what it's like to have a good book in hand. So I started reading empowers achievement and development, or as I call it, read. <laughs> and what I've been trying to do so far is get in the school systems around me. So I've been in Saraland and I've been in Chickasaw and I really just want to incentivize reading so the kids ask me questions, get candy, get books. And so I've been collecting lots of books, lots of sponsorships to help provide for these kids and help, help them create a desire to read, one like I have, because I think it's a real fire and imagination that you get when you pick up a good book. And future-wise, I really want to get in the Mobile County school system. Um, you know, looking always to connect with people, and I'm also hoping to spread to Washington County and get into their school system and even into some middle schools because I've been primarily in elementary, but I think I'm ready to tackle on the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders. And I just hope that through this process, getting ready for March, getting ready for Miss Alabama's outstanding team, that I can inspire children and anybody else that I might come across that reading is the way to get to the best version of yourself. Thank you. Thank you all. I'll turn on my microphone. I'd like to thank Mr. Andrews and these, uh, these young ladies for joining us here today. It is just amazing to see such young women who are so well-spoken, who have such composure, and who are who, that have a focus on things that in, in in our community and in life that really are so very important. I think they they seem very wise and mature, well beyond their years. We certainly uh, wish you the very best and in, in your all your future endeavors and in your scholarship program. And uh, and we'll we'll stay tuned. We we certainly support you and look forward to your next step. Thank you for being here today. We need Do we have any other speakers? We don't have any other speakers. I was going to try to grab a picture of them, but I think that one. Do, do we need to bring them down? Do you want to take a picture with them down here? It's up to you. Okay. So where do we go? I think take they're, they're going to come down here. Okay. We'll, and we'll take a picture. Just briefly. We have Sheriff Cochran has requested to speak as well. 
Good, good morning, Commissioner Sheriff Sam Cochran. I'm sorry oh. I was late. I thought y'all were at 10 o'clock and I walked in. And, <laughs> oh, okay. Keeping good company. Don't right? feel bad. Uh, I, I just want to be very brief. Um, I just want to thank you for taking the time to examine the, the issues behind, I think, the referendum that you're going to, to vote on, uh, I, I think, this morning. And uh, thank you for, for getting involved in that. I think it's very, very important to our community. And then I'd briefly say there's probably not a day that goes by that I don't see where we utilize this as a tool. Just I saw in a city yesterday where they had some car break-ins and some people ran into the woods. And, of course, one of them had a gun probably stolen from a car, but not sure. But it allowed them to arrest him for no pistol permit while you determine where the gun may have came from and things of that nature. And, uh, of course, I know we had another murder last night in Mobile. I'm just concerned for our youth and... Uh, we just got to keep the guns out of the hands of our youth. So thank you very much. May I, may I speak for just a second? Sheriff, thank you. I mean, you're taking a beating on this. I mean, you really are nationwide, all over the country. And um, I, I, I'm in the same ship as you. I, I mean, being a former law enforcement officer, um, I think pistol permits or a tool that, that law enforcement uses every day. And so I know uh, the stance that you're taking and other sheriffs across the state are taking is not a popular stance with some people. But uh, I wanted to thank you because you, I read the articles. I mean, I think as far away as the Houston Chronicle this week, I've read articles just bashing you and your almost 50 years of law enforcement. and. Um, you know, for standing up for what's right, and I, I appreciate it. I would just add, um, this is a this is a matter that that the com the county commission does really doesn't have legal authority to approve or disapprove. the 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 sheriff contacted us to to take a position in in support of 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 him uh, opposing any legislation that would eliminate. Uh, permits for concealed carry. You know, two of the three of us on this commission don't have boots on the ground law enforcement experience where we've been out uh, investig making car stops and, and investigating uh, gu guns that we may encounter or that may be encountered in that type of interaction. And so, you know, all we can do in terms of uh, formulating opinions is, is to to rely on people who do have that experience, who do have the boots on the ground, uh, the sheriff, uh, the, the district attorney, uh, others that uh, do this on a daily basis. And, you know, uh, I know that there's discussion, you know, both ways about whether this is, uh, this should be, whether it follows the Constitution, whether it should be legal or not. I, I think for me, it, it really boils down to if if this is any if this is a tool any tool that law enforcement can use to keep citizens safe then I would prefer to err on the side of supporting that position to continue these permits and and I you know and based on like I said I don't have the the personal experience in dealing with it but all I know to do is rely on those who do and I think uh, because the sheriff has asked us to, to step up and, uh, and address this in terms of, of a, a statement. I think that's where we are today. Our attorney has uh, drafted a statement and that he'll read here uh, when we get to that item on the agenda. So, if, if, so can we, let's just take item three out of order. So if the sheriff wants to stay here to hear it, then he can go on and handle the rest of his business. Yeah. If Commissioner, um, item number three originated as a resolution after some review and discussion. <clears throat> recommendation from my office was that the commission just make a statement, which is outlined in item number three. For the benefit of others, there will be no supporting resolution other than a statement which will be the action item taken by the commission and that statement item number three if i may mr hodges the county commission would adopt a statement that the mobile county commission does not support 
Any proposed legislation seeks to eliminate the necessity of obtaining a concealed carry permit. And that will be the wording that is put out by this commission. And again, no resolution backing other than these words. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Okay. Item number one, approved claims list. So moved. Second. Two, hold public hearing so any citizen of the county shall be given the opportunity to be heard for or against any item related to the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance report. Public hearing is now in session. Are there any speakers for or against? Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed. Item three was already acted on. Item four, hold public hearing to receive citizens' comments regarding to the proposed substantial amendments to the program years 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2021 action plans for the home program. This information has been available to the public since November 19th, 2021. The public hearing is now in session. Are there any speakers for or against? Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed. Number five, adopt substantial amendments to the program years 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2021 action plans for the home program following the comment period and public hearing. So moved. Second. Number six, approve amendment to professional services agreement with Tetra Tech related to the U.S. Department of Treasury Emergency Rental Assistance Program to extend the term to February 28, 2022 with up to $100,000 in additional compensation. So moved. Second. Number seven, approve application for special events retail alcohol license of eminence promotions for Southeastern Combat Championships located 7701 Hit Road. So moved. Second. Number eight, approve appropriation contract with Mobile Ballet in the amount of $5,000 from District 3 funds for its Discover Dance Program and Expanded Educational Outreach Program. So moved. Second. Number nine, approve sponsorship agreement with Dauphin Island Sea Lab Foundation in the, in the amount of $250 from District 3 funds for its Marine Science Education Fundraiser event. So moved. Second. Number 10, approve sponsorship agreement with the Child Advocacy Center in the amount of $2,500 to be divided as follows for the Serve It Up With Love Tennis Tournament. So moved. Second. Number 11, approve sponsorship agreement with Blacks in Government Court City Chapter in the total amount of $2,500 to, to be divided as follows for its annual Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast. So moved. Second. Number 12, approve appropriation contract with Board of School Commissioners of Mobile County in the amount of $20,000 from District 2 funds for Media Center Technology. So moved. Second. Number 13, approve appropriation contract with Board of School Commissioners of Mobile County in the amount of $10,915 from District 2 funds for a MED acoustics system. So moved. Second. Number 14, approve appropriation contract with Board of School Commissioners of Mobile County in the amount of $20,000 from District 2 funds for stage curtains, band equipment, and team sports uniforms. So moved. Second. Number 15, adopt resolution authorizing request of the records department to dispose of certain items from fixed assets inventory list, declare uh, as surplus property, and authorize items to be disposed of by lawful means. So moved. Second. Number 16, approve professional services agreement with ICE Miller to consult in, on arbitrage requirements of internal revenue code in calculating rebate amount owed to federal government for Mobile County Limited Obligation Warrant GOMESA Projects Series 2020 bonds. The contract amount is $2,000 for the computation period October 6, 2020 through December 31, 2021 and $1,750 annually. 
Additionally, 10% of fees charged for administration expense with additional fees not to exceed $500 per bond year. So moved. Second. Number 17, approved memorandum agreement to allow the Mobile County Emergency Management Agency to retain professional services to update the Mobile County Emergency Operations Plan pursuant to the county's disaster recovery contract. So moved. Second. 18, approve contract amendment number one with Haggerty Consulting Inc. to provide professional services for the Mobile County Emergency Operations Plan update project. So moved. Second. 19, assign, assign, approve, authorize assignment of Clark Gear Latham and Associates to renovation of the Davis Avenue Library to serve as successor architect for Homes and Homes Architects as per the agreement and according to the terms and conditions therein. So moved. Second. Number 20, authorize acceptance of a grant award and subrecipient agreement from the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources for the Bayula Battery Collection System lift station upgrades in the amount of $13,057,849 with no match required and authorize execution of all associated documents. So moved. Second. Number 21, consider taking the following action on bids. So moved. Second. Number 22, approve renewal for Equipment Watch online services with Equipment Watch in the amount of $3,640 for the period of January 19th, 2022 through January 18th, 2023 for the Public Works Department. So moved. Second. Number 23, approve renewal for depot exchange data collection in-touch equipment support services with Kronos Incorporated in the amount of $4,161.48 for the period of February 23rd, 2022 through February 22nd, 2023 for the engineering department. So moved. Second. Number 24, Approve renewal of support maintenance on chiller systems with Train US Inc. under the current purchase purchasing cooperative contract in the total amount of $22,292 for Government Plaza, Government Plaza Annex, Sheriff's Office, and Revenue Commissioner for one year. So moved. Second. Number 25, adopt sole source resolution approving the purchase of the glove e-band and shield devices in the amount of $18,130 for the Sheriff's Office subject to legal review. So moved. Second. Number 26, approve correction in the minutes for September 27th, 2021, item number 41. The item should have read as follows. Adopt sole sur source resolution, approving the purchase of Purist Air Equipment in the amount of $36,432.60 for the Sheriff's Office. The revision in, in the original dollar amount of $36,312.60 is to include shipping cost in the amount of $120. So moved. Second. Number 27, approve reappointments of Eddie Kerr as council member, Tina Sanchez as proxy member, and Brenda Barnes as member at large to serve on the Gulf Coast Resource Conservation and Development Council, each for two years, effective January 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. Number 28, approve reappointment of Brian Feuenmeyer to serve as member of the Mobile County Board of Human Resources for a six year term expiring on September 30th, 2027 to replace Robert A. Williams. So moved. Second. Number 29, authorize advertising and receiving bids for Chickasaw Chickasa Park Utility Infrastructure Upgrade Project. So moved. Second. Number 30, authorize closing Chickasaw Park to the public effective January 31st, 2022. So moved. Second. And commissioners on item number 31, there was a revision to the item that's been provided to you, I'll read it. Number 31, adopt resolution 
with change of precinct boundary lines with no change of polling site and with change of precinct numbers for the precincts as follows. And this information will be supplanted by the updated revision that we were given this morning, or is it, this is not correct, what, what was in the, um, where is Cynthia? <laughs> Looking around. Oh, there she is. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, what you have before you is the correct language. Just making sure. So moved. Second. Item 32, authorize acquisition of property and acceptance of right-of-way deeds and or easements from the projects from the following property owners for the following projects. So moved. Second. Item 33, accept airport rescue grant offer and agreement for Jeremiah A. Denton Airport and authorize the designated official representative of the, of the Mobile County Commission to execute the grant offer and acceptance. The agreement covers 100% federal funds reimbursement for the costs related to operational expenses at the airport with a maximum obligation of $22,000. So moved. Second. Number 34, award bid for City of Citronelle resurfacing in the amount of $289,344.06, Town of Mount Vernon resurfacing in the amount of $178,063.79, City of Satsuma resurfacing in the amount of $219,710.78 to H.O. Weaver & Sons for their combined low bid of $687,118.63. So moved. Second. 35, authorized to advertise and receive bids for Dauphin Island Streets resurfacing. So moved. Second. 36, reject acceptance of Ralph Latham Road into the county road inventory due to failure to meet the requirements of Act 2019-307 having all right-of-way and, right and easement documents executed and returned to the county engineer prior to the last day of the month of September 2021. So moved. Second. 37, approve acceptance of Grand Farms Road West into the Mobile County Road Inventory in accordance with Act 2019-307. So moved. Second. 38. Approved preliminary plat only of Audubon Point. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I interrupted you. Continue. Uh, preliminary plat only of Audubon Point. Reapplication was required due to previously approved preliminary plat expiration on August 10th, 2021. So moved. Second. 39. Approved preliminary plat only of Penny Lakes First Edition Subdivision. So moved. Second. 40. Approve agreement for relocation of utility facilities in conflict with proposed roadway improvements with mobile area water and sewer system for Tanner Williams Road from Snow Road North to Ziegler Boulevard, additional lanes and bridge. This work will be installed with the road project. There is no cost to Mobile County. So moved. Second. 41, approve transfer of maintenance agreement between Mobile County and the City of Saraland for the City to maintain portions of Celeste Road and Radcliffe Road for a period of three years. So moved. Second. Number 42, approve setting the following speed limits as listed below for the road segments of roads and subdivision streets. So moved. Second. Uh, we do have an add-on agenda item, commissioners. Add-on agenda item number one, approve professional services agreement with Craig Daly for services as legal advisor and trainer with the Mobile County Sheriff's Office effective January 1st, 2022 through January 31st, 2023. Commissioners, uh, just for clarification of the agenda item, the 
next 12 months compensation for Mr. Daly is $82,467.48, of which the county will be paying $60,000, and the Mobile County Sheriff from his discretionary fund will pay the approximately $22,467.48. That will be made a lump sum by the sheriff through his discretionary fund to the county treasurer or finance for their weekly disbursement payments to Mr. Daly over the next 12 months of the contract. Madam President, um, just, a, just a comment here. Uh, because of the handling of the circumstances involving this contractual matter, um, for me, as a matter of principle, um, I'd like my vote recorded as an abstention. Do you want to move? So move. Second. And note, Commissioner Husband abstained. Item number 43, Commission announcements and or comments. Uh, I just would like to take the opportunity to wish everybody a safe, happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Everybody, uh, hopefully 2022 will be even better. <laughs> Have a good one. Happy new year. <laughs> prosperous, happy new year. All that. <laughs> so we have some employees who will begin the new year as retirees. Von Seal Owen with 33 years as a buyer for the sheriff's office. Susan Dover, 26 years as an OA2 with tobacco tax. Wow, she will be missed, certainly. All of them will be missed, but that's a very small office. Doug Hathcock, 13 years. Albert Newberry, 31 years, Division Transport Superintendent for the Engineering and Public Works. Which Newberry? What was the first name? Albert. Okay. Is that Andy? Y'all gonna let him retire? Hmm. I'm gonna have to call him. Larry Faison, 40 years. Wow. Wow. That's all, Larry. I thought you'd been that long than that. <laughs> At Strickland Youth Center, he was he was a fixture there. And so we we really appreciate their service and um, we wish them the very best uh, in whatever's next in their lives. Commissioner, speaking of being missed, I would like to uh, say a thank you and acknowledge uh, Catherine Reeves, who has been my district administrator for the last four and a half years. Today is her last day uh, with the county, and she will she has done a tremendous job and uh, has really been a bright spot, I think, for District 2, and we will really miss her. But wish her the very best. She's got a bright future. Yay. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. Hey. And as a reminder, there is a Engineering Care Board meeting next. Yep. Uh, number 44, approve request for motion to adjourn until January 10th, 2022. So moved. Second. I'd like to call to order the Mobile County Engineering Care Board meeting for December 28, 2021. Item number one, approved minutes of the meeting of November 22nd, 2021. So moved. Second. Number two, accept report of the Mobile County Commission of the balance of the indigent care fund at November 30th, 2021. Funds available, $237,143.94. So moved. Second. Number three, approve request for motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 